Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Love of Christ Lutheran Church to our online service and to our in-person service as well. We are so glad you're here this morning. I am Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmadge, we uh, give you a huge welcome. We're very excited this morning as we will be having a few uh, new members joining at this service. And we have Citrus Sunday outside there. So if you want any citrus, or maybe some of you actually brought citrus to share, but maybe you have oranges only and there's grapefruit out there. So feel free to take some of that. And uh, all that will, is left will be sent down to St. Mary's Food Bank, who will take all of this. <laughs> that would be the Facebook delay. <laughs> Uh, just a couple other announcements. One is that the three tenors will be coming here on Sunday, March 6th. So please check our e-news for more information. You'll be able to buy tickets, $25 each online. Or um, I believe they'll also be selling them at the door. But look for further information on that on our e-news. And speaking of e-news, that is our main line of communication. So if you're not uh, connected to our e-news, we would love for you to be connected. And just go to our website and uh, subscribe, and you will receive a weekly e-news. If you can smell how delicious the COC is smelling this morning, we have our Scout Sunday. So I'd like to have the troop leaders uh, come up and tell us a little bit more about what's going on. And while they're coming up, uh, Girl Scout cookies will also be sold this Sunday outside uh, the front there close to the oranges. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Scout Sunday. This is February 6th, the date that scouting first started in the many, many years ago. What was, the, what was the year? 1910, I believe. So it's good that we could actually have Scout Sunday be on the true birthday of scouting. I'm Dennis Balk. I am the Cub Scout leader, the Cub Master for PAC 301. This, I'm completing my 15th year. And, well, it's because of all of you that we've been able to have such a successful program for the 15 years I've been doing it, plus the many years before that. Both my boys have been through scouting as well as Cub Scouting. Um, and over the years, we've seen a lot of changes. We've seen the pack wane and, and wax. We were at a high at one point several years ago of 54 members. And then last year, after COVID, we were down at nine members. So it's good to say, though, that with the availability of the facility and being able to produce this program, we're now up again to 21 this year. So that's a great thing. Thank you. And again, it's because of you and because of you know, the church facilities. We just had our Pinewood Derby here yesterday. We had the track set up right here and we ran over 200 races. And this year we actually used, we actually brought the Girl Scout troop in and they had some races with us. So that was, that was a lot of fun. And it was good to be able to work with the Girl Scouts as well. So once again, thank you all for allowing us to do scouting here at Love of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. My name's John Zakaris, and I'm the Scoutmaster for Love of Christ Boy Scout Troop 301. Troop 301 is a scout-led organization of 40 scouts, 11 to 17. The troop is thriving. Since the beginning of our scouting year in August, our scouts have earned over 192 merit badges and 22 scouts have advanced in rank. This past week, we celebrated our 81st Eagle Scout, Max Keith, with a court of honor in the sanctuary. Thank you. Our program is based on faith-based values and character development focused on duties to self, family, community, and God. We have done this primarily through service projects and our outdoor adventure program of monthly camping, kayaking, hiking, and other high adventure activities. The troop is anxiously preparing for summer camp in June to Eagle River Scout Camp in Juneau, Alaska. Comp 
Complementing merit badges, we have an active STEM program that introduces scouts to careers and skills of today and the future in areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I want to thank this congregation for without your continued support, we would not be able to provide this program. Together, we are not only improving the lives of youths and families, but building our community leaders for tomorrow. In appreciation, please join the troop for a pancake breakfast after the service in the back. We'll be available after services today to meet and answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Please stand as we prepare to enter into worship with a song. Clap your hands with me. Let's worship the Lord this morning. The cross before me, the world behind. No turning back, raise a better heart. It's not for me, but it's all for you. Let the heavens shake and split the sky. Let the people clap their hands and cry. It's not for us, but it's all for you. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to unfold before your throne the only place for those who know it's not for us but it's all for you send your holy fire on this suffering let your worship burn for the world to see it's not for us but it's all for you Not to us, to your name, be the glory. Not to us, to your name, be the glory. Not to us, to your name, be the glory. Not to us, to your name, be the glory. All glory and honor and praise. 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 Not to us, to your name be the glory. Not to us, to, to your name. Let us pray. All glory and honor, Lord, and praise go to you this day as we come before you in this special hour to offer you our praises and our worship. Lord God, as we enter into this worship service, bring to us an air of humility. As we know that we don't always serve you because we are often thinking about ourselves. God, place upon our hearts 
something that we might not need to do instead of doing something else to honor you. Lord God, we, worship, we offer this time of worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our worship will continue with the gospel acclamation and the reading of God's word. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Good morning. Today's gospel is found in Luke chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night, all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Here ends the gospel. You may be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ who invites all of us to not be afraid, to not be afraid as we follow him in catching people with the wonderful gifts of faith, hope, and love. Amen. You may not have caught the breaking news of last week, and no, I'm not talking about the Polar Weather Express that's freezing out 100 million Americans, some of us who are related to them. I'm not talking about Russia invading Ukraine. That hasn't happened yet, as far as I know. And I'm not talking about the news of a head of ISIS blowing himself and his family up as special op forces were about to capture him in Syria. The news I am speaking about is that of 22-year veteran quarterback Tom Brady officially announcing his retirement. After shattering many records, proving even a 44-year-old man can play in a young man's sport, and possessing seven Super Bowl rings and an assortment of other trophies and accomplishments, after consulting with his supermodel wife, Tom has decided it's time to hang up his cleats. What also was interesting is that by retiring before the end of last week, Tom Brady left $20 million of guaranteed money on the table if he'd only put on the suit one time 
this coming year. I share this because of the last words of our gospel reading for this morning. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. We know, we know Tom Brady and his wife Giselle have plenty, plenty of financial resources and probably half a lifetime still to live, but his retirement causes some to pause, to pause and reflect what is it, what is it that leads anyone, anyone to leave what they have known and been doing for a long time and move on to something else new. As the pandemic has given rise to what has now been called the Great Resignation, with many Americans leaving, leaving the jobs that they had for something different or nothing at all, as many Americans have packed up and moved out of our urban centers to move to more small towns and affordable housing, as countless individuals and communities going way, way back to Abraham and Sarah 3,800 years ago, have left the security of family and community to follow the leading of God or the leading of Jesus, what drives any of us, any of us, to leave our boats and overflowing nets of fish behind? Listening to our story from Luke today and listening to earlier stories, people are, people are captured, people are curious, people are inspired and even infuriated by what Jesus is saying and doing. I've been playing in my mind what Pastor Nanette shared last week when she was at that conference where they were being asked, who's been Jesus to you? And one of the respondents was, I've been thinking about Who in my life has dared to tell me the truth straight up that caused me to want to hurt them? Jesus says and does things that provoke, that challenge, that yes, even offend us at times so that our response might be to run from him, to hide from him, to try to silence him. Or we must swallow our own pride and our own stubbornness and bow down to him in humility and maybe even with a sense of embarrassment. Jesus has left his hometown of Nazareth after a near-death experience. He continues his public ministry of preaching and teaching what the reign of God is like when it's let loose in the world while demonstrating the restoring and healing power of God at work through exercising evil spirits and mending and restoring broken bodies. He finds his way to the fishing village of Capernaum on the lake of Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee. He's brought to the home of a local fisherman, Simon, whom you and I will come to know as Peter. There Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. Word of that healing takes place and spreads out, and over the days following, many from Capernaum, many from the area, come seeking out Jesus, asking, pleading, demanding for their bodies, minds, and souls to be healed. The demand is overwhelming, so much so that Jesus retreats early in the morning to a desert area to get away from the crowds, to spend time in prayer and communion with God. But the people will not give up. They hunt him down. They come after him because they want to hold on to and possess Jesus just for themselves and their needs. But Jesus makes it clear. There are other places he needs to be and other people he needs to see. So he leaves for a while to go to other synagogues and other communities preaching, teaching, and healing. At some point, as we get into our gospel today, he returns to Capernaum. People recognize him. Like celebrities in our culture, crowds began to gather around him, press in around him. He sees an opportunity to jump into one of two empty fishing boats as the fishermen are cleaning their nets after a night of fishing. 
the boat he happens to jump into is that of Simon. Jesus asks him to push off a little, to create a buffer, to create a buffer from the crowd so he can teach them rather than be swallowed up by them. Simon obliges, possibly remembering what Jesus had done for his mother-in-law. When Jesus had finished teaching, Simon may have felt like some listening to pastors who like to go on and on and on, thinking, finally, he stopped. Well, Jesus may have been done with the crowds, but he wasn't done with Simon. He asks that the boat be pushed out to the deep water, and let's do a little fishing. Any of us who have worked a long day, a long shift, day in and day out, know the fatigue that comes after a long day. We also know what it feels like when you and I are being asked to do something by somebody who doesn't know what we know about our business or our area of expertise. Simon is respectful, but honest. He wants Jesus to know that he and his team know that the fish just aren't biting. They had put in a full night. They're tired. They're hungry. Their nets came up empty. And daytime on the lake is not the right time to go out fishing. We don't know why. But Simon does oblige Jesus. And lets down into the deep water the freshly washed and packed up nets. Deep water in the Bible often refers to a place of chaos, of mystery. Recently, I was visiting with Marion and Ernie Ernie Rood as they had had a great family vacation to Belize in January. And Marion, at the age of 80, accepted the challenge of her younger family members to do a little snorkeling. Her telling of that story was one of being amazed. Of being amazed. Amazed at how much one cannot see from above the water. And if you just go down a few yards under the water, a whole new, amazing, beautiful, fantastic world opens up before you. In the deep water, the unexpected can amaze us and surprise us. So how many of us, how many of us, because of fatigue or lack of curiosity or fear of uncertainty, are unwilling to venture into the deep waters to catch, to catch what God might have us catch, to see and experience what God may want us to see and experience? As the nets went out into the deep water at the wrong time of the day under the direction of a landlubber rabbi named Jesus, Simon, his brother Andrew, and their partners James and John haul in a catch of a lifetime. Of a lifetime. Simon thought he knew what to expect expect based on his experience. He's the expert here. In the process of giving in to Jesus' simple request, Jesus shattered those expectations. Simon's response is to fall on his knees. To fall on his knees confessing to Jesus how little he trusts him. Simon feels unworthy to be in the presence of Jesus. We might picture Jesus extending his hand onto the shoulder of Simon. Or maybe holding his chin and raising his face up so Jesus can look him in the eyes saying, Do not be afraid. From now on, you're going to be catching people. This experience on the lake was life-changing for Simon, Andrew, and James, and John. According to Luke, they left the catch of a lifetime. They left what appeared as everything. To follow him. 
which leaves the listeners and readers of this fish tale asking, what are we willing to leave behind to follow Jesus? What is it that, that Jesus is calling you and me to be doing in the circles of love and responsibility we find ourselves? What does catching people have to do with the daily grind of your and mine trying to make a living and providing for our households? Luke is sharing this story to reveal that Jesus will often interrupt the course of our routine, the daily rituals we have, the daily lives that we're going about with an invitation, with an invitation to remember the holy purpose to which each and every one of us has been called. That purpose is to cast our nets deep and wide with the love of God that is broad and inclusive. The only attraction the gospel has to those who do not know it or have not heard it is that they are beloved children of God. Beloved children of God. There's something that naturally draws us to others, others who possess a spirit of understanding, a spirit of compassion, of being non-judgmental, being accepting and filled with a spirit of generosity. We find ourselves wanting to spend more time around those who are life givers rather than life suckers. Sadly, too many congregations filled with those who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ think that the growth of the community is dependent on the paid professionals to keep bringing in the catch, perpetuating the thinking that they are the ones who've been trained. They are the ones who are being compensated to keep the whole enterprise going. I remember visiting with a congregation in the valley that had dwindled over the years, and on a good Sunday, 65 people would gather for worship, and the average age of the group was 70 years old. They were looking to call a new pastor, a new pastor with the hopes that if we just got a young, handsome, charismatic, energetic, and, 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 and gifted leader, their memories of overflowing Sunday schools and multiple services would return. One of the leaders made a telling comment. She said that it was reported that the illuminated sign on the major street that they sat on was broken and it was being repaired. And the report came from the person repairing the sign that a neighbor had stopped and asked, why are you fixing the sign? I thought this church was closed. Despair and disconnection can cripple the mission of Jesus Christ in a faith community. As any community of faith remains centered on Christ and continually remembers the purpose of the church is not to collect members, but to grow disciples of Jesus, the focus almost always is going to move outwards rather than turn inwards. It's going to move outwards towards those who are open to know they're a beloved child of God. Those who are struggling and wondering who is the God who created the universe and created us. And what is the reign of God like when it's let loose in the world? I share with that group of leaders to imagine. To imagine how the word in the neighborhood about the church being closed might be changed. I invited them to think about if they really wanted to see children reached with the good news of God's love, might they dare to imagine that sharing will not necessarily happen inside the walls of that church. I encouraged them to consider inviting the most open and able-bodied of the group to march down to the nearby elementary school and speak with the principal and simply ask one question. How might we serve the children who come into the school Monday through Friday? Well, you know what they did with my advice. They filed it away. They did absolutely nothing until there was a crisis. And the crisis was, 
a bunch of folks were finding that if you hit air conditioners and steal the copper on them, you can make some money on it. So this church had been targeted by thieves, and others in the area had been targeted by thieves to steal copper off of air conditioning units. So, so they reached out to the police, and the police asked the church, would you dare be open to gather neighbors to have a conversation about developing a neighborhood watch program? And of course, they did that. And you know what happened? People in that community stepped on the property of that church that they thought was closed, and they met a few people who had a pulse and actually acted like they actually cared about the neighborhood in which that church sat. And they began to build relationships around what is in the interest of the common good and not how do we get more bodies in the pews. And over a period of time, as those relationships were built and people got to know their neighbors... A few of the neighbors dared to walk in that church willing to risk and see if, in fact, that the, that the people that they had met in those neighborhood gatherings were really part of a group that worshipped and trusted and believed in a God they seemed to be reflecting. Catching people will always involve caring for people. Catching people will involve learning behind, leaving behind What's in it for me? And no, we really do have good news to share. To share with people because who among us, of everyone you and I know, who does not want to know that they're loved, that they matter, that they belong? As each of us humbles ourselves and hears the words of Jesus, don't be afraid. May we realize Jesus is inviting each of us into this amazing adventure of discovering the unexpected in the deep waters of living out our lives right here and now. May we learn that following Jesus may be costly. You might have to leave a full net behind. It might be inconvenient. But it's worth leaving whatever might be holding us back from really trusting the invitation of Jesus. Amen. At this time, I invite those who are joining our congregation to come forward. I have on my list Cynthia Mike Cheeley and Charmaine Hastings. If you'll come forward. going to share a hymnal. Charmaine here. Oh, you guys are here. You weren't supposed to be here. Come on up. Oh, they do, don't they? See, that's happened. All right, Charmaine might come at 11. All right, we are going to turn to 234, I think it is. All right, I'd like to present, uh, present to you, we have David Tejan and Jan Barnett, we have Mike and Cynthia Sheely, and uh, they are coming to be a part of this faith community at this service. Uh, we have at each of the three services people joining us. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? With the congregation, do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God?
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, You have now made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ. If so, respond, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Stir up in each of these new brothers and sisters here at Love of Christ the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice in receiving these new members. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. I invite the congregation to stand as we join in our song, Kyrie Eleison. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, hear our cry and heal our land. Let kindness lead us to repentance, bring us back again. For your name is great and your heart is grace. Kyrie eleison over all you reign you alone can save. Kyrie eleison Lord have mercy Christ have mercy on us now for your name is great and your heart is grace. Kyrie over all you reign, you alone can save. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy on us now. Who is this God who pardons all our sins? So ready to forgive. You delight to show your mercy. Who is this God who pardons all our sins? So ready to forgive. You delight to show your mercy. For your name is great and your heart is grace. Kyrie eleison over all you reign. Kyrie eleison, for your name is great and your heart is grace. Kyrie eleison, over all you reign, you alone can save. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy on us now. Please be seated. And let us pray. 
The spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Lord, in your mercy. Equip your church, O Lord, to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. Lord, in your mercy. Holy, holy are you, Lord God. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets and in deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of the creation that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we lift up today those refugees coming from Afghanistan arriving in the United States. We lift up today all who have been affected by flooding and landslides in Brazil for the displaced, the grieving, and all providing assistance and support. We lift up today, Lord, and ask for the safety and well-being of all Olympic athletes for the host city, Beijing. Lord God, as we look to our world, soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse toward violence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. Lord, day we... Lord God, today we lift up those undergoing treatments and tests. Kathy, Dan, Elizabeth, Pete, Rhonda. We lift up those in extended care. Jackie. We lift up those with health concerns. Bob and Nan, Ludwig, Rod, Bill and Mary, Tammy, Clark, Kevin, Bob, Susie, Debbie, Sue, Sierra, Rebecca, and Jeannie. We lift up those who are hospitalized. Bob, Jared, Wolfgang. We lift up those recovering from surgery. Dennis, Kirk, Bob, Kevin, Terry, Stephen, Taylor. We lift up those who are undergoing chronic and long-term health concerns. Gail, Barb, Doug, Berlin, and Jake. Rudy, Pam, Kit, Leslie, Dan, Vinny, and Isaac. And we lift up those who are in hospice. Don, Shirley, and Bill. And Lord God, we lift up symphony, sympathy and comfort to the family and friends of Bob Seisman upon his recent death. Lord God, as we lift up these prayers to you, we pause a moment to lift up those who are close on our hearts who need healing. May your compassionate arms of care and love bring hope, bring rest, bring strength and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Jesus brings to us and calls us, Lord, with a holy invitation to drop something, to center ourselves on him to be open to Jesus' call. Lord God, might we be open to the ways you are growing us. Lord, in your mercy. As we look to the disciples, they received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, 
We lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and bring to you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for our sending song, Yes, I Will. Declaration. Well, I count on one thing. The same God never fails. Will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late. You're working all things out. You're working all things out.
Praise God. 